for an automobile enthusiast and if you're watching this show today chances are good that you're one of us there are a lot of things that can be called once in a lifetime experiences driving a veyron driving an f1 car heading to paths unknown in hatchbacks it's a pretty long and comprehensive list but as i sat by the window of the executive jet flying over the arctic circle and setting up to land at the small swedish town of arvidsjör it dawned on me this could well be the experience that dwarfs all the others arvidsjör is the state capital of lapland here in sweden but as you can see there are no girls with dragon tattoos around me instead i'm surrounded by serious poker faced engineers from every major auto manufacturer in the world who come here throughout the year to these frozen lakes to do some serious winter testing with temperatures that range from a bracing minus 10 to a rather more chilly 35 below 0 this part of sweden is best consumed in short visits with a small airport a few nice hotels lots of frozen lakes and a population of just 6000 people the chance to see the northern lights and experience true winter wonderland should be reason enough to come here but if that was the case i wouldn't have a story to tell here would i but the icing on the cake at least for me is the fact that this is also the place where companies like audi bring selected customers dealers and journalists from around the world for a once in a lifetime ice driving experience 48 hours of complete quattro powered sideways section over the next 2 days those of us lucky enough to make the trip will be driving on these frozen lakes on a series of specially designed circuits learning to drift counter steer learning the scandinavian flick and on occasion scaring ourselves silly what f- hell you see each of us had a dedicated car finished in a nice shade of red to stand out on the ice cars that would have to stand up to the punishment we would be putting them through These are completely stock Audi S4 Avance with petrol engines producing 333 horsepower, quattro four-wheel drive system, Audi Drive Select Sport differentials, and in a small concession to the conditions we're playing in, special studded snow tires. Among those joining me at the Arctic Circle were Michael Pershka, brand director of Audi India, my good friend and racing driver Aditya Patel, and one very lucky overdrive contest winner Anubhav Arya. Michael Boschke thank you for the invitation and this looks like something straight out of a fairy tale have you done the ice driving experience before no in this condition here at this place no i just had a chance uh, during the world economic forum where we sponsoring the indian delegation twice to go a little bit on ice and on the lake but very basic and i think now that we arrived here i think we all look forward to beautiful winter wonderland with the red s force i think it's going to be an amazing time and what are you looking forward to the most over the next two days Well, I think first of all have lots of fun in the cars. Um have fun with you guys in the evenings, have really improved the driving skills. I mean really get confident on ice and snow, knowing exactly what to do. Get the most out of the quattro, take off all the ESPs and everything and just let the machine work and be in control. What are you looking forward to the most out of the ice driving experience? Uh basically doing things that people don't allow me to do on a race track. <laughs> but uh, yeah i've heard a lot from a lot of people that you can learn various things about car control on ice things you would never learn on a regular basis so i'm looking forward to putting that in practice and seeing how much i learn i'm looking forward to learning how to drive on snow which has uh, always been uh, my, one of my wishes in my life this is really turning out to be very exciting so far Even as we stood around taking in the experience our instructors led by ex F1 and DTM racing driver Marcus Winkelhock 
had been working behind the scenes, preparing the different circuits that we would most likely be destroying. One of the, the instructors, in this case it was Jerry, um, he made a plan and, and he really knows, he's, he's from Sweden and he really knows how to make a, a good track for, for good exercises. For sure you have mostly drivers, they are not really experienced uh, in, in uh, driving on ice and snow. In the beginning uh, you shouldn't go too much risk. Um, the good thing is we cannot destroy anything on the car here. We really have a lot of space and if you go off nothing uh, is, is going to break on the car. So that gives you I think a good feeling for the drivers. So they have no pressure from that side. With the briefing behind us and light fading fast, our instructors sent us out onto a short course designed to help us get comfortable with the cars, get a feel for the available grip or lack of it and set the stage for the days to come. After a few sighting runs with the traction control on, it was time to get adventurous, turn all the electronics off and try to get the tail sliding. When it came off, it was thrilling and a lot of fun. And when it didn't, you just had to recover and try again. The first thing you notice when you set out onto this icy track to get driving is the fact that there's almost no grip whatsoever. And that's even with these special studded snow tires that we're using. And since ESC is off, what you're doing is using a combination of throttle, brake and steering inputs to have all four wheels pointing in the direction you want. Notice I said the direction you want and not straight because most of the time, all four wheels are pointing anywhere but straight. Despite the long flight and even longer day, none of us really wanted to leave. But as darkness fell, it was time to head back to the hotel sauna and a warm bed to rest and recharge ourselves for day two. Welcome back to this special episode of Overdrive coming to you this week from the Arctic Circle. When I arrived here on day one for the Audi ice driving experience, we got a little bit of a glimpse into just what we were in for. But now, today, we get down to serious business. Our instructors have set up a series of courses that are slowly going to build up our skill levels to a point where we can be fast, sideways and safe on ice. Let's get started. Up early in the morning, we went straight out onto the lake in freezing conditions with the snow continuing to fall. And while the aim remained to have as much fun as possible, it was also time for serious instruction. Now obviously you can't turn from Sandeep Srikant to Hanu Mikola overnight and therefore our instructors have set up a series of activities that are going to build up our skill levels step by step. The first of those activities is really, really simple. You've got this nice oval track here. So the idea is quite simply to get your car set up very nicely, get it sideways, get it powering through on a slide around the corners, control yourself, get yourself back together on the straight and do it all over again. Learn about understeer, oversteer, explore your limits, get the car sliding sideways and move on to the next task. The oval course is possibly the most fun you can have on ice with all your clothes on. <laughs> and with temperatures being what they were, nobody wanted to try the other way. But it wasn't all plain sailing either. Having never been taught to drift by professionals before, all I thought I had to do was get the car turned into the corner, stamp on the accelerator, get the rear moving and catch the slide. Well, let me tell you that it's a lot more complicated than that, especially when you're using Audi's Quattro four-wheel drive system, because here you need to be really, really gentle with how you step on the throttle, modulate your throttle and your braking inputs and make sure that the car does not understeer. Oversteer is good, understeer is a killer. Most of the drivers, they go too quick into the corner because they want you to get sideways and if you go too quick into the corner, you get understeer. That means the car is pushing over the front axle, but that's exactly the opposite of what we want actually. So the best thing is slow down the car really a lot, turn a lot, go once in power, then you can feel the car goes sideways, go off the power, wait until you're really sideways and then just hold it uh, with the gas 
on power. Sometimes you really can hold the steering wheel straight because of the four-wheel uh, drive and just modulate with, with the throttle and then you can hold it in a really good slide. With such expert instruction available and no small amount of enthusiasm on tap, it was easy to get the drift, in this case, quite literally. That was the best part of the entire experience because you could uh, lock, uh, opposite lock the car completely and still go on full speed. That was pretty exciting. So our second exercise today is all about learning how to use the car's momentum to get it sideways going into and out of corners. Basically, what we're trying to do here in Scandinavia is called the Scandinavian Flick. The Scandinavian Flick, also known by its not-so-cool alias, the Pendulum Turn, was made famous by the great Scandinavian rally drivers of the 60s and 70s. In a nutshell, it's all about transferring weight and using the car's momentum to break traction and swing a car into corners at high speeds. Set up the car in the middle of the road, tap the brakes, turn away from the corner and tap the throttle, going against everything your brain is screaming at you to do. Lift off to shift weight over the front wheels while flinging the car into the corner. And if you've got all this right, simply dial in some opposite lock and keep feathering the throttle to hold the slide. As you can see, it looks spectacular and sitting behind the wheel, the rush is so intense, it has to be illegal. But get it wrong or lose concentration and you'll soon find yourself taking an involuntary rest. Now here's a really good reason why people say that driving on snow and ice is the best way to learn performance driving. I've just gone oversteering off, losing completely losing control of the car, smashing into this sandbank. So now all I have to do is wait. I've called for the tractor. The tractor is going to come in, hook me up, tow me out. I need to get out, knock a little bit of snow out of the wheel wells, and then I'm good to go again. If something like this had happened at the racetrack, I'd be facing a massive repair bill and the complete loss of my day's driving. Having been extracted from my icy prison in double quick time, I returned to the track to put in more laps. Growing in confidence, dusting off and putting into practice all the years of driving theory lodged in my brain. Now, one of the most important learnings that I'm going to take away from my IC experience, and this is something that holds true even if you're driving on a racetrack or even on the road, is the importance of vision. When I first got here, I was obsessed with what was immediately in front of my bonnet. That's all I would look at and Therefore, when I got myself in a bit of trouble, my attention would be focused there instead of where I wanted to go and I'd end up doing my counter steering wrong or not counter steering at all. So my instructors took me away again and bashed the simple truth into my head. When you're driving a car fast or even when you're just driving a car, it's really, really important to look where you want to go and not where you're going. Sounds really simple, but quite disconcerting when where you want to go is actually there and where your car's pointing is here. Welcome back to this special episode of Overdrive. We're at the Arctic Circle. I'm here for the Audi ice driving experience. And as you can see, it's absolutely freezing. Now, over the past couple of days, I've been slowly building up my skills and my car control. And now it's time for it all to come together as I go in search of the perfect lap. Since this was our final day at Arvitsyor, the instructors opened up the entire lake giving us a full 8-kilometer long track with fast, long sweepers as well as slower, more technical and sideways sections. I started the day with our Swedish instructor Jerry riding shotgun. And even though some of my antics and dodgy ability made him wince, we were soon tearing up the track. But get carried away by the wide open stretch of ice in front of you and there were the ever-present snowbanks waiting for your company. 
Well, this is a really long track, and some of uh, some parts of the track are uh, have more traction. The first time I crashed in snow was the scariest thing ever because I, my car was covered completely in snow. Uh, but after a few times, I got used to it, and I was driving through the snow, making the track wider. I'm very happy. Uh, I want to thank Road Drive for giving me a chance to do this, and uh, thank Audi for letting me do this on uh, such a wide track and in these beautiful cars. I re I'm really loving it. After a quick drinks break, I hit the track again. This time as a passenger with Aditya Patel, who was so smooth and instinctively fast that he had the instructors feeling a bit insecure. So just when I thought I was getting the hang of ice driving, I was able to put the car sideways, get it powering out of corners, having a lot of fun with it, pushing what I thought were the car's limits. I got in the car with Aditya and in the matter of the first 200 meters, a professional racing driver makes it very clear what the difference is between him and us ordinary mortals. Man, Aditya, this is an exercise. Look at this, look at how much fun you're having. I can't complain. I haven't done this before, like we said. It's my first time on ice this week, so... I mean, might as well make full use of it. Now look at me, I'm looking out of the side window. And see, I know I want to go there. I've never done this before. You spent a lot of time sideways. You've learned the Scandinavian flick. Are we going to see Aditya Patel rallying this season as the bug bitten you now? <laughs> the bug's bitten me, but not rallying this season. I'd love to do a rally somewhere, anywhere in the world, in any car, but uh, not this year for sure. All right, enough of the serious stuff. Mm -hmm. We still got a few hours to go, so yeah. I know I can't beat you on that track, but let me see if I can race you down here. You ready? Let's One, go. two, three, go. Michael, two days of the most incredible action, both on the ice and away from uh, the ice tracks. But one thing we, I've noticed, with you at least, it's always on the go, attack, 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 all the time, whether it's in business or here on the track. You are sideways all the time and pushing it to the limit. Well, but you know, if you're sporty, I mean, you're a sportsman yourself, right? When you have that hunger, going for gold, going for number one, I think it is around your entire life. It's not only business and I think here it was good. Some lap timings. I spent some time with Aditya in the car learning from him. I think he's a great race driver and I think he got used to snow and I could pick up a few tricks from him and that's really good fun and kind of it motivates you to push the boundaries not only in business but also here. Now 2012 was a difficult year for the auto industry as a whole in India. What are the key drivers to crack 10,000 this year? Is it going to be an Indian-made Q3? Is it going to be the A3 sedan? Will we see that this year? What can you tell us? We have a Q3. We will probably start assembling it by the middle of the year. So Q3 will expand the market significantly. Second is, of course, we have the A4 full life, uh, full, uh, life cycle. We will have the A6, which is a very hot property. So products, definitely. The brand has been very strong. We crossed 1.7 million fans on Facebook. We had great brand campaigns. The third thing is our network growth. We're going from 15 to 25 by end of last year. We're going from 25 to probably 34, 35 this year. So I think network is another element and customer experience. And I think that's a proof that customer experience is really not only for us, um, something we say, something we live, we put our money where our mouth is. We said, let's live a real Audi experience, start the year with the ice drive. My chat with Michael was soon cut short by mutual consent as we were all eager to get back into the cars for one final blast before the sun set on this truly once in a lifetime experience. We're almost at the end of our three days here at the Arctic Circle doing the Audi ice driving experience and in my rush to maximize every single moment and drink in every bit of this incredible experience, I almost forgot to do this, film a closing to the show. But really, what can I say about this experience? When I came out here, I was told that this was going to be a once in a lifetime experience. Now that's a cliche that you hear a lot in the auto industry. We go through drives all over the world and almost every single drive is a once in a lifetime experience that can't be bettered until the next one comes along. But let me tell you that this really is a once in a lifetime experience and I don't see these three days being bettered ever. I've had an incredible time, I've done incredible things with a car and the icing on the cake for me is the fact that I've improved my car control immeasurably. I'm going out of this experience a much faster, a much more in control and a much safer driver. And that really is what all of us auto enthusiasts aspire to be in the end. 
Thank you so much for watching this 250th episode of Overdrive. Remember, you can catch this show and all of our other tests, reviews, and features on our YouTube channel. Follow the team on Twitter at ODMag for highlights from all of our trips. And join us next week for another action packed episode of Overdrive. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you had as much fun watching this as I had filming it. So let me tell you, that's going to be hard because I've had an absolute blast. <laughs>